of, um, I'm going to call it sort of explicit competition that happen in these societies. Like I know with the Maasai, right, they have competitions to see oh, yeah. jumping dances and things like that for men, right? And I'm wondering if so, you know about any for women and any so for men, for example, in order they have this, uh, in order to become a warrior, uh, you have to kill a lion, but not just kill the lion. You have to cut the lion's tail while it, while it's still alive, right? That's <laughs> the they're not allowed to do it anymore. But that's uh, that's quite competitive. They're very competitive. I didn't, you know, uh, I didn't uh, tell you, but you know, whenever we talk about. Um, field experiments like this and how nice they are. I want to show you the picture with the buildings. So, you know, we tell, we say, they, we ask them to sit here, we ask them to sit there, and they waited. Now, in one case, I stood over here in order for them not to go, and a guy with a spear, it was a very, very tall guy with a spear, came over and told me that he wants to look at this. I didn't stop him, you know, I, I would not be here. They are much more competitive. The Maasai men are really competitive. You could see this, that, uh, and it interacts a lot with age also. <coughs> right, so clearly, I don't know about similar stuff with women, either in the Maasai, clearly not in the Maasai, but also not in the Kasi. Right, so I don't know about the Kasi girls, you know, the Kasi, surprisingly, are very small people. So I was a giant over there. I knocked my head when I entered the, the room. Um, they don't look competitive in any sense that, that, I could, uh, that I could think. So like the Maasai, that was an example of being you know, aggressive at least. So for me, aggressive and competitive is somewhat related. The Maasai are clearly aggressive. The Kasi, I did not feel uh, anything like that. And they don't know about any games that they have or rituals that they have to promote this. Do you think the Maasai women would have felt more comfortable competing if there were a group of them? So I, I, I don't know and I don't even want to make a prediction because I know that in the Western society when I try to, I know that in the Western society it's all over the place, right? So the gender mix is all over the place. I can't even make a guess about what would happen with the Maasai women. I, I just don't know. So, long before Larry Summers lost his job, Harvard got Dick Light from their med school to do a study of why, even though there were lots of women who came into Harvard College <coughs> intending to major in math and physical science, very few of them actually graduated. Unless they are lefties, by the way. Lefties survive much longer in this than righties for women, yes. So Light's finding was that the difference was self-knowledge. Um, that, that there's a very strong pecking order in those departments. Right. People at the bottom of the pecking order in their belief tended to drop out and do something easier. Right. Um, and the men were much better th than the women at fooling themselves about where they stood in the pecking order. So some kind of overconfidence. Right. Yes. Uh, there is a nice paper by uh, Muriel Niederland and uh, Lisa Westerlund that looks at this. So they, uh, they look at the selection issue, selecting into competitiveness. And they showed, so they, they do it uh, within subject design. First you perform the task. Their task was adding up numbers. And then you, then you choose whether to compete or not, based on past performance. And they showed that women choose less to compete. But what's interesting is that the worst men are about twice as likely to compete than the best women. Right? So the women were so much better than they were, still they were less likely to compete. So overconfidence is extremely important. Men tend to have much higher overconfidence that in some cases, like surviving in this kind of departments could be good. Right? It would, you know, so clearly they show in their paper that men lose money because they are overconfident and women lose money because they're underconfident. It goes both ways. Yes? I don't remember that they got rid of it. That's not um, my... So right. So, um, 
if you give enough feedback, you might, uh, you, you might uh, get rid of the... So you would imagine that people go through life, and that's a good example in which you get lots of feedback, right? You fail your first calculus class, you fail it second time, you, you, you get... At the end of the four years of the undergrad, you must know that you're not a mathematical genius, right? But, but maybe, you know, maybe women, you know, give up earlier or something. Well, the evidence was that they were more likely to know what their other pe what their peers thought about them. So they, they asked they asked all the peers who's the best student in this department, and they got a ranking. Right. And then they asked everybody, where do you stand? And the women got their standing about right, and all the men thought they were at the top. Right, 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 right. right. Funny people, the, these men. Right. <laughs> yes. Um, so it seems to me that. Whether or not you should enter uh, a competition depends on your understanding of the amount of variation there is among the, the competing parties. So if there's no variation at all, you should not compete. Because uh, the outcome will be decided by chance. Right, but then if you're risk neutral, you definitely want to compete because you get three times more. You get 50% chance of win, three times more, so 1.5. So you need to be quite risk averse in order to choose not to compete, or if you're risk neutral, you need to think that you're really bad at the task. Right, so it's, um, those are the two. So if you're just a normal person, no variance, or 50% chance of winning, lots of variance, so just, uh, it makes sense to compete. But it's easy enough to ask people what their beliefs are about the distribution, right? So we did try to do this. It's not clear that if you ask students at UCLA if they understand the question. It's quite clear to me that if you ask the Maasai people, they do not, I don't know how to, sen to ask them sensibly what's their expectations. We tried. But my question was, that, could it be that the difference you found between the two groups is driven by differences in perception? Absolutely, of absolutely. No, that, that's clear. So the beliefs about your, your relative ability clearly could, uh, could affect this, right? So, and that goes back to what you're saying. So if I think that I'm wrongly think, you know, I'm a man, I wrongly think that I'm uh, good at the task, I'm going to choose to compete. I'm a woman, I'm I wrongly think that I'm bad at the task, I'm not going to choose. That could definitely explain. Differences in beliefs could definitely explain the difference here. That's why we tried other tasks like the anagrams, and we found that it reduces the gender gap, but doesn't eliminate it. And when we ask on beliefs, and over there, you know, those were students that we could ask them, we find strong beliefs that women are actually better at the task. So it seems as if beliefs are important, but that's not the only thing that is going on. It's I think it's natural to speculate that people are less likely to compete, maybe better team workers. Um, is this anything that has been considered? Especially, it was tested especially in the negotiation uh, so in negotiation, you can think about, I teach negotiation, so we teach them that there is the more competitive zero-sum kind of negotiations. You know, you go to buy a car, basically you negotiate the price, and then there are more cooperative ones in which you have to create value, right? And you would imagine that people that are less competitive will be better at creating value. We try to look for it, if anything, we found the opposite. So people that are better negotiators in the competitive one, in the distributive one, are also better at creating value, which we were surprised by it. But there is a good book by Linda Babcock, uh, Women Don't Ask, in which she, she tries to look at all this kind of evidence, and it seems as if women are just the worst negotiator, and Linda's claim, at least, is that because they don't initiate the negotiation in many places. That's the title, women don't ask. So in many situations, uh, that, so uh, they have a nice experiment in which um, you're told that you're going to earn somewhere between 2 to $7 for the experiment. You perform the experiment, they pay you $2. Men are about three times more likely to, to ask, why only two? We were promised between 2 and 7, and women will say thank you and go. Right, so that's her claim, Linda's claim, is that uh, women just don't initiate the negotiation. Yes? <coughs> it seems to be an assumption that if one is risk adverse, <coughs> excuse me, in one area, then the one would be risk adverse in all other areas. But what about the possibility that the, the question being risk adverse, but even with the same person, would be highly context dependent? Right, so. Uh, just come back to some of the observations about thinking about the mass 
women were quite clearly in the context right. of women against men, I could well understand that they would not be uh, willing to be competitive right. at all. But I imagine that in a context in which women are dealing with women, not necessarily in these kinds of tasks, but in other kinds of tasks that are important for them and their notion of what it means to be a woman, what it means to right. establish two different rankings amongst women, that one might find that they are you know, a right. pattern is perspective risk aversion. Right, so you raise a few, few interesting points, I think. First of all, something that I think is really, you can get some insight, I don't know how to quantify it, but if you want a task in which, a measurable task in which I can measure the output very well, because th that's useful, in which women are better than men, I cannot find a single one. If you want a task, in, measurable task in which men, or at least the stereotype is that men are better, it's very easy to find hundreds of them. Right, so it's, it's, it seems as if finding, you know, raising kids, that's, you know, what people tell me, raising kids, for example, is something that women care about, but I don't know how to quantify it. It seems as if the, the tasks that are quantifiable, it's easier to find uh, tasks that, that the stereotype, at least, is that men are better than women. Anagrams were the only thing that we didn't find. About risk, uh, so it turns out that there is a big debate how much, so uh, the correlation between uh, safety belts, safe, safe sex, financial risk taking. What's the correlation between this within a person? Can we characterize people by some kind of parameter? It turns out that it's very hard. The correlation is very low. And about the, the gender mix in the population, that's, uh, again, we know from Western societies that it changes, we change one parameter in the environment, in the experiment, and it changes. So I don't really know. And, find it hard to speculate about the Maasai women because I really, I know, I don't know enough about their culture. Yes? I have a question coming from somebody watching from Fullerton. Um, <laughs> so they want to know, um, in the second study, if you asked anything about, um, if you asked people about their confidence and if there were any links between handedness and confidence. Uh, so, I mean, I, I know when you control, you have to speak louder so they can hear you much. When you control for confidence and the regressions, uh, you still find the same significant effect of handedness. Uh, uh. So the answer is that we did ask them, and it didn't seem to be important. But I'm not sure that I trust these measures of confidence that we asked them. To be frank, you know, you know, in these villages in India, I'm not sure that they understood this. But to the we did the best we could. We put it in the regression. It doesn't seem to be the difference. That, that doesn't seem to be the effect on <coughs> the handedness. Thank you very much.